chapter 11, verse 1, Spirit of God alights upon the twig of the shoot that grows from the stump of Jesse. It's a stump because the ancestral tree of Jesse, who is the father of King David, has been cut down. God banished the line of the kings of Judah when Babylon destroyed the temple and deported them to uh, Babylon. The last king, Jeconia, he just told him, no, no, no descendant of you was ever rule on the throne of David, <clears throat> from the throne of David over Judah again. And that's what the stump is. A sheep grows out of it. That's that's a different line of descendants. We don't know anything about it. David had many, many children. And from that particular branch or shoot, you find a twig on a tree, a new ancestral tree that nobody has any idea of. No man can prove who he is by saying, here's my ancestry back to King David. And the proof of it is not there. I mean, that's just common sense. You got to have a description of it, and God continues using ancestral tree uh, metaphors in Isaiah 53. This is prophetic. Isaiah prophetically refers to the Stump of Jesse, father of King David, as an announcement of the ending of the line of the kings of Judah. And he's right, Isaiah's writing this, and God's having him write it, but he's writing this long before Jeconia was banished by God in Jerusalem and the temple destroyed. Whose last king, Jeconia, was banished and the line terminated. The line of the kings of Judah is the ancestral tree of David, forbidden. forbidden to ever rule in Judah and Jerusalem, the tree fell, leaving a stump. It is the line of heirs in the first chapter of the book of the New Testament of Christianity of the Holy Bible. We start out with the banished ancestral trade in the Christian Holy New Testament. That's where we start. You got to go past the book they sold and call their own and then give it no meaning calling it Old Testament. Let's just delete it and take it out. It's got no business with the New Testament. And who is that line? Why do we start there? It's the line of Jesus Christ. The kings, the line, God no longer wanted. That's where it starts. God did not banish this line of Jesse of the kings of Judah until long after the death of Isaiah. God knew in Isaiah's time that the line of the kings of Judah would be taken into exile and his temple destroyed. That he would end that line, leaving just the stump of Jesse for his anointed one to be raised from. Jesse, <clears throat> Jesus, could not fulfill the book of Isaiah not for the reason that his line had been banished, but simply because he doesn't come from the sun. I mean, Christians can say, oh, well, that line was banished, but he sent Jesus anyway, so he must have lent, he must have lifted the banishment. Yeah, but he's still not from the sun. And he's certainly not describing Isaiah 53. You need to take your scissors and cut your Old Testament out. Your Old Testament doesn't belong with the New Testament. There is no Jesus in it. He didn't do anything in it except he took some parts that the Jews expected, like a conqueror, a savior. Well, they're under, they're, they're all under rule of Rome. Jesus takes one prophecy and says, all the prophets say of me using your Old Testament Christians, all oh, the prophets say to me, I shall ride this ass into Jerusalem. And the next, what the prophecy he's quoting, the next verse is verse 10. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9 and 10. And he says, And there the Gentiles 
will scourge me, spit on me, stake me, uh, and kill me. But on the third day, I shall rise. All the prophets, Jesus. Well, let me see. I got 20 right here. Right, Christians? You've got 20. Open them up. Open them up and see if he's telling the truth. Now, back when Christianity got started, nobody could do that. That's why it got rolling. Such a ridiculous concept. God made a human sacrifice to you, the Son, so you don't have to obey his laws. And he left the Jews because they sinned too much. But why? <laughs> Why did you have to have somebody uh, sacrifice for you to be free and righteous and free of your sins? You weren't sinless when God said, I can't take the Jews anymore? Oh, I think you weren't. Yeah, I don't think so. And guess what? No Jesus ever died for your sin. There's not a Gentile out there that's not responsible for his sins and will not be in righteousness and will not be in right standing. And there's no way you ever are going to go to the Jewish heaven. God says, I'm making a heaven where the name Israel shall endure. If you want to see heaven, if you want to find forgiveness, if you want to fall under the written con <clears throat> written forgiveness God brings with him in the day of the Lord, which is today, according to Jeremiah 31, then you're going to have to convert to Judaism. You're going to have to become a Jew. And guess what? God would say back at you. You go to my people and try to force them to convert to Christianity, a pagan sect of human sacrifice? Back at you. And you know why he says that? Because he tells his people in chapter 51 of Isaiah, which leads into the description of the righteous servant in 52 and 53, I'm taking my <clears throat> cup of wrath, my bowl of healing from you, and I'm passing it to those who told you to get down on the ground and walked all over you. They were the you Christians. You took the book. You told them they don't know how to read it. You told them they, it's prophetic of Jesus Christ, a false idol, a false God. 